Joining me now here in New York are Nina Burley, who is an investigative journalist and columnist for the New York Observer, who just returned from reporting on the ground in Nigeria, and Judah Gua, who is a theology professor at Mercy College and a native of Nigeria, as well as an expert on the terror group Boko Haram. And from Washington, D.C., Christina Finch, who is the managing director of Amnesty International's USA's Identity and Discrimination Unit. Very nice to have you all here. Thanks Thank for you. having me. Thanks. So, Christine, I want to start with you and ask you about the report that Amnesty International did that I just spoke of. Why didn't the Nigerian government act? Well, as you mentioned, on Friday, Amnesty International released a report that said the Nigerian government had prior knowledge of the, of the attack happening and failed to act. So what we know is that there's been a conflict in northern Nigeria for several years, and the Nigerian government has taken a variety of different approaches to the, ending the conflict. And so we're concerned that the Nigerian government in this gross dereliction of duty to uh, protect civilians felt like it was okay not to take action to make sure that these schoolgirls were not abducted. All right, so here's the challenge then. If we're talking about Boko Haram as the, as the group that has committed this act, but you're also talking about gross acts of negligence on the part of the Nigerian government, but then you have these calls from social media to do something, with whom would we partner to intervene? What, what would that look like? Well, we're calling on the Nigerian government to take all lawful measures to get these girls back. Our paramount concern is for the safety of these girls, and every minute that goes by, we're very, very concerned about what's happening to them. So the Nigerian government really needs to step up and take action and make sure that these girls are recovered. And, of course, we're also calling on Boko Haram to immediately release these girls. All right, Christina, hold for me one moment. Professor, I, I want to come to you on this because... It does feel to me like a moment like this galvanizes international attention, but attention that, unlike Amnesty International, is just sort of folks who are in social media or in mainstream media, don't actually know very much about the country, about the challenges on the ground there, and that calls for action might lead us to doing things that are hasty and that make things worse. Do you have a sense of whether the U.S.'s role at this moment is improving or worsening the situation relative to Boko Haram and these young women? I, I think that her, the role of the United States is actually very vital, very important uh, to make any um, substantial progress in this matter. Uh, the history of uh, the Boko Haram in Nigeria and, and so many times that uh, they have been cases of um, uh, terrorism and attacks and uh, it appears that uh, the law enforcement agencies like the police organizations have become overwhelmed mm. by, by the sheer force of the Boko Haram and the fact that the Boko Haram appears to be even better mm. armed and more sophisticated. I mean there have been cases where police stations have been totally uh, attacked mm -hmm. and prisoners liberated and um, as time goes on everyone becomes almost like fearful of the Boko Haram and, and you find out that even the military uh, think that the Boko Haram is uh, much much better armed. So, so, so. The, the, what, you, what you are laying out here I think is so important because it is how terrorism works right that it's not just the act but it's how the act then signals something about the capacity to do to do even bigger and greater things perhaps than they than they are, are capable as a matter of their institutional structure. And so I wonder, you know, as we talk about our global war on, on terror, you know, clearly this is an organization that has terrorized a nation. Can we, can we think of this as part of what the U.S. cares about, like that these are our girls and that the terror being experienced in Nigeria is our collective terror? Nina? Well, I, I mean, I think that um, the kidnapping of the girls um, is part of a larger... Um, many, many acts of, of horrendous, outra outrageous things going on there. And, and when I was there, every day, uh, dozens, if not up to 100 people, were being murdered on a daily basis in these villages. And it was in the newspapers. Nigeria's got a lot of newspapers. And th they were reporting on this daily. The people that I were, was talking to in sort of the high levels of society I was over there interviewing people who are uh, wealthy members of the the uh, petro elite. This is you know Nigeria is one of the top yep. producers of oil. It's a rich country, even though it's mm -hmm. 
impoverished. It's, there's money, there's a lot of money there. And that may be why this is happening, actually, mm -hmm. that these terror. But people didn't seem to be bothered by it at all mm -hmm. in, this, in this group in Lagos. And um, the government isn't inclined to act when there isn't an outcry. And, and so, in a way, this, this, what's happened here is, you know, Boko Haram got a lot of attention, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Yep. If I'm the mother of one of those daughters, I, I don't care whether it has some, I mean, maybe in some sort of long run sense, I would care if my daughter's abduction and, and the horror that she experiences has some good out of it. But in the short term, uh, Christina, I want to ask, thinking very carefully about these young women in this place do we have any optimism for the possibility of their return or is the incentive for this terror operation to simply make sure that these girls never return well, I think we have to have optimism. Uh, you know, one thing that Amnesty wants to stress is that every minute that goes by, every day that uh, the Nigerian government and the world turns a blind eye to what's happening is facing these girls, um, putting these girls in even greater risk. We've already received reports that they're being sold into sexual slavery, trafficked out of the country, and so there's not a minute to waste to make sure that these girls are returned. So time is short, but I, I do want to acknowledge that there is a very large Nigerian-American population, both of uh, first and second and, and past generations. Do you have a sense um, here in the U.S. about how the Nigerian-American community is absorbing and, and coping with this moment? Absolutely. I think uh, the Nigerian community here, they are appalled by, you know, what has happened. And of course, as I said before, um, <laughs> um, over the years, the question of uh, security in the country has become very, very problematic. And there are many groups that kidnap people, you know, asking for ransom. Mm -hmm. And actually, many Nigerians here are afraid sometimes to return home because of this. So this has, uh, you know, incrementally become almost like uh, a common, um, you know, uh, event or something mm -hmm. that, you know, that occurs uh, every other time. Uh, but but this seems to be uh, uh, the, the very very uh, uh, thing that is almost like out of proportion with yep. what has been happening all the time. Th this and, is this and, is the moment that galvanizes. Moment. And, 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 when, when, and so, when, exactly, and the Nigerian community here. I've been talking to many people. Uh, the great disappointment. Yep. They complain that the government appears to be sleeping and doing nothing. And, and, and yet, as, as and, you said, Nita, perhaps perhaps this will yeah. be the one moment when, one moment. when, we, when yeah. we have galvanized it's the attention. It's brought attention yes. to, the, uh, to what's happening to, to forced happening. marriages and girls all over the world. All over the world. Christina Finch in Washington, thank you. Also thanks thank to you. Nina and Jude here in New York. My letter of the week is next. You're welcome.